What did this city look like 200 years ago? The western third of San Francisco is all originally sand dunes. And there's unique things that grow here. Yeah, I mean, the sand dune system here is really unique. In fact, it houses one of the rarest plants in the Presidio, the San Francisco Lucinja. In the 1990s, there were only about 100 left in the entire planet. Yeah. And the area got developed, and so there were just a handful of specimens left here in the Presidio. The Presidio is a park at the foot of the Golden Gate Bridge. We've come here to get a glimpse of the natural wonders that greeted San Francisco's first settlers. This is what San Francisco would have looked like. From the rolling sand dunes to a rare remaining salt marsh. Yeah, well, if you were here 200 years ago, you would have seen a scene very much like this, salt marsh and a series of dunes along the northern edge. You know, in the old days, in, in Native American times, they would have used the edges of the marsh as a gathering place where they would have gathered food, actually. Mm -hmm. So they had a seasonal encampment just up the way, and they would have gathered here, and they would have harvested fish and shellfish out of the marsh. Later, the Presidio's strategic location at the mouth of the bay drew San Francisco's first European settlers. Notably, in 1776, the Spanish founded the Presidio. It was the northern end of the Spanish Empire. Uh, they were worried about the Russians who were working their way down the coast of California. So they built, actually, right on this location where we're standing today, the original Presidio. Hidden inside this building are the adobe walls of that centuries-old Spanish fort. Interestingly enough, we did some testing on it, and mm -hmm. it helped us understand what grew here before the Spanish arrived. So we did a pollen analysis. We looked at the seeds that were in the adobe, and we were able to identify some plant species that oh, no longer amazing. exist. Among the treasures the Spanish found in the Presidio was a very rare freshwater lake. Well, Mountain Lake is one of two remaining natural lakes in San Francisco. And Mountain Lake is really important in the history of the Presidio. When the Spanish came in 1776, they actually camped by the lake. Uh -huh. And there's this really great description of the lake. They talked about the plants that were around it and the quality of oh, the lake, cool. how That's sweet great. the water was. <laughs> you know, in California, water's pretty precious. So yeah, uh, finding a lake like this in the middle of sand dunes is, is pretty incredible. Nearby, these bluffs support another rare ecosystem. So this is serpentine scrub. These bluffs are underlain with serpentine, which is a state rock. And serpentine is a unique soil in that it's slightly toxic. So there are a lot of native species that have adapted to only grow in that kind of soil condition. And some of those are really rare. These bluffs support one of the rarest plants on Earth, actually, which is the raven's manzanita. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's only one of them in the wild. I can't believe that. that's incredible. You can't get any rarer than that. Yeah. Yeah. This is it, the Raven's Manzanita. We weren't allowed to disclose its exact location because it is so imperiled. So how did these natural wonders survive the centuries? Well, when the United States seized California in 1846, the Presidio remained a military post, now for the American Army. And became really the most important army base in the West. But there was way more land here than the army ever needed. So the army never developed about 10% of the Presidio. And in that 10% is the best remaining collection of San Francisco's original biodiversity. Of course, the army wasn't in the conservation business. It built barracks and roads. And it also planted trees that just did not belong here. So these are Tasmanian blue gum trees. There aren't a lot of trees. You know, there weren't big trees here historically. And so when these trees were planted, what did it do to the native ecosystem? Well, the native ecosystems are much shorter and they're developed, adapted to sunlight. And so planting a forest like this shaded out all of the native species. Natural gems like Mountain Lake were in ruins by 1994, the year the Army handed the Presidio over to the National Park Service. So the shore behind me was covered with blue gum eucalyptus, and the eucalyptus dropped all kinds of things in the water, and it really had a really seriously negative impact on the fish, and you'd come out in September, October, and there'd be fish dead floating on the lake. But more recently, the Presidio Trust has been turning back the clock on two centuries of environmental degradation. We had to go way back, so we started, you know, period descriptions, like that first description of what the lake was like, what was growing around the edges of it, and so we use those to reconstruct the kind of ecology of the lake that would have existed. Restoring the Presidio salt marsh proved an even bigger challenge. The site was used by the Army, mm -hmm. uh, and it was used for an airfield, so the area behind us would have been completely paved. Oh, wow, and just in that period of time, it's been really restored. Yeah, and the goal was to recreate the kind of marsh and dune ecosystem that would have been here when Native Americans were using the site over 200 years ago. 
Today, people come and just enjoy the marsh. They come and bird watch. There's an incredible diversity of birds that are using the marsh. They come and enjoy the wildflowers that are blooming here along the edge of the marsh. You know, what we find so much in the Presidio is that restoring an ecosystem is the first piece of it, but over time, nature just fills the void. You know, right. It's a sort of, a, you build it and they will come. And, and it, was, it was very much what happened here. You know, we built the marsh and within six months, there was an incredible array of birds here. You build this natural system and nature heals itself. Yep. And it's really inspiring. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following. <laughs>